Imagine an aerospace giant with over 4,000 aircraft orders worth hundreds of billions, engineering breakthroughs that could revolutionize flight, and a 107-year legacy of American dominance. Yet, they can't pull the trigger. That's Boeing today. For years, they've had the design sitting in Seattle, truss-braced wings that could slash fuel burn by 30%, engines that transform efficiency, technology that could bury Airbus for a generation. Yet the decision never comes. So why, after Airbus launched the A320neo with a simple re-engine job and captured 8,000 orders, can't Boeing commit $20 billion to save their future? How did a company that bet everything on the 747 and won become too paralyzed to move? And could this hesitation be the moment American aerospace dominance shifts to Europe and China forever? Here's what's really happening. In 2019, Airbus's A320 family became history's most delivered jet. Over 15,000 aircraft delivered and counting. That's not a milestone, it's an execution notice for Boeing. Every single day, Airbus delivers more planes. Every airline that orders an A320neo, locked in for 20 years. Pilots, parts, training. Boeing will never touch them. Think about it. Over 6,000 Airbus narrowbodies on order. That's not a backlog. It's a generation of airlines Boeing will never get back. But here's where the math turns brutal. 44,000 new aircraft needed over 20 years. Boeing's market forecast, over $9 trillion in total orders. Most will be narrow bodies. Right now, Boeing's getting crushed. But here's the trap nobody talks about. Boeing's sitting on over 4,000 max orders, hundreds of billions locked in, cash guaranteed through 2035. Every plane delivered pushes the decision deadline further. Every delay costs market share they'll never recover. But why can't they? They just win back airlines from Airbus. Here's what airlines never tell passengers. Once they pick Boeing or Airbus, they're trapped for decades. The switching penalty has tripled since 2000. Simulators, millions each. Ground equipment, millions more. Even the catering carts are different sizes. Think about this. Every year, Boeing delays. The walls get higher. Southwest's turnaround times tell the truth. Used to be 25 minutes in their heyday. Now, 35 to 45 minutes on average. Bigger planes, tighter security, complex boarding. Everything takes longer. Ever wondered why airlines never switch manufacturers? Would you pay millions to switch aircraft types when your entire operation runs perfectly? That's the trap airlines never escape. Think Airbus is Boeing's biggest threat? Think again. The real enemy isn't Airbus, it's physics. The 737 was designed in 1967, when fuel was basically free, when airports had infinite space. Today, different universe. Here's what's killing Boeing. Airlines need planes that carry more people without bigger gates. The MAX 10 can't stretch it another inch. Environmental regulations aren't suggestions anymore. They're death sentences, EU emissions trading, California fuel standards, Norway wants fossil-free domestic flights by 2040. The next plane can't just improve, it needs to revolutionize or the company dies. But here's where it gets interesting. Inside Rolls-Royce's facility, the Ultrafan engine hit a milestone, 10% better than current engines, potentially 25% gains versus older models. The catch? It's designed for wide bodies, scaling it down for narrow bodies. Rolls-Royce hasn't committed. Boeing's waiting to see if it's even possible. Here's what changed everything. June 2024, Boeing issued requests to engine makers for 30,000-pound thrust engines. The specs? Perfect for a 737 replacement. They're not waiting anymore. NASA's truss-braced wings don't just improve efficiency, they transform it. Studies show 30% potential fuel savings. On a long long transcontinental flight, that's $12,000 to $15,000 saved per trip. Multiply by 10,000 flights, $120 to $150 million annually. The gut punch? Hanassa's X66A demonstrator is years behind schedule. The technology that could save Boeing, still on the drawing board for commercial use. But wait, there's more. The breakthrough isn't one miracle technology, it's integration. Blended wing body concepts, the fuselage itself generates lift. Passengers potentially sitting inside a wing. NASA's validated the aerodynamics. The certification nightmare. That's another story. Have you ever wondered what it's like when engines eat their own wake? Boundary layer ingestion. Converting drag into thrust. MIT research suggests 8 to 10% efficiency gains are possible. Military aviation already uses versions of this technology. Here's the kicker. NASA and universities are exploring shape memory alloys that could morph wing geometry mid-flight. 
Self-healing composites in lab testing, ceramic matrix composites proven in military engines. If these technologies mature for commercial use, the efficiency gains would be game-changing. Think about this. If Boeing can integrate just three of these concepts, the math changes completely. But innovation on paper means nothing without conviction. Inside the Everett factory, conference tables scarred by decades of decisions tell a different story. Engineers fighting over impossible futures. Build another Max variant. Safe but slow death. Revolutionary clean sheet design could kill the company. Between them sits Boeing's credibility, shattered, barely breathing. Here's the call every CEO dreads. Kelly Ortberg must launch a $20 billion program that could bankrupt the company. Or watch Boeing become aviation's has-been. Ortberg took over in August 2024, inheriting this nightmare. His engineering teams are begging him to pull the trigger. His CFO is showing him the 787's $32 billion development costs. Wall Street's credit analysts are circling. Here's what Ortberg did that shocked everyone. He didn't kill the truss-braced wing, he just said it won't be the primary solution. The research continues. They're hedging their bets. The leadership has made it crystal clear. No new airplane until they fix their quality disaster. Another development program like the 787. But here's the disaster nobody's talking about. The brain drain is accelerating. Thousands of experienced engineers lost over five years. The exodus continuing. Flight test pilots joining startups. Senior engineers retiring faster than replacements arrive. They need thousands of specialized engineers for a clean sheet design, but they're losing them monthly. Without fresh blood, even the best concepts stay PowerPoint dreams. Remember this, innovation is a people problem before it's a physics problem. The boardrooms split. Financial engineers want discipline, no moonshots. Aerospace dreamers say playing safe guarantees death. Ortberg sits between them. Every decision he makes determines whether Boeing survives the decade. Here's the thing, every quarterly earnings call is now appointment viewing for industry watchers. Because one day, Ortberg will have to make the call. Between spreadsheets and wind tunnels lies an impossible choice. Think this is about market share? Think again, this is about survival. If Boeing launches and fails, bankruptcy. The Max disasters already burned $20 billion. Another $20 billion bet that crashes? Game over. If they don't launch, Airbus owns narrow bodies through 2050. American Aero space dominance unbroken. But wait, there's a new player nobody's watching. China's Comac C919 just entered service. They delivered 10 aircraft in 2023. Beijing's pushing for 30 this year, 50 next year, targeting 150 annually by 2030. Ambitious, absolutely impossible. Ask anyone who doubted China's high-speed rail. Comac isn't certified internationally, but here's the thing. Trajectory beats position. Beijing forces domestic airlines to buy them regardless. China Southern, China Eastern, Air China, they don't have a choice. Think about what happens next. If Comac captures even modest share while scaling toward 150 planes annually, they'll have capital for global competition. The Chinese government doesn't care about quarterly earnings, they're playing a 50-year game. Subsidizing every aircraft until they achieve economies of scale Boeing can't match. But here's what keeps Boeing executives up at night. Competition spreading like wildfire, Embraer exploring hydrogen, India considering indigenous jets, Silicon Valley to Singapore startups pitching electric dreams. Each new player fragments the market Boeing once dominated. The bottom line, Boeing's not just fighting for orders, they're fighting for relevance in an industry that's leaving them behind. Choose wrong and Boeing becomes Kodak. Choose right and they might just pull off aviation's greatest comeback. Dallas, Southwest Airlines headquarters, fleet planners staring at an impossible choice. Hundreds of planes need replacement after 2035. Wait for Boeing's ghost plane or buy Airbus's proven A320neo. This dilemma plays out in every airline boardroom on Earth. United's already made their choice. 270 Airbus A321neos on order. Delta? Hedging with used 737s while waiting to see what Boeing does. American Airlines CEO Robert Isom has publicly called for clarity from Boeing on their narrowbody strategy. His message? Decide soon or we 
we're moving on. Want to know how bad it really is? The math is brutal. Clean sheet development, $15 to $20 billion. Boeing's debt, $58 billion. Credit rating, one notch above junk. But surrendering the narrow body market means permanent second place. But here's the deadline nobody's talking about. Industry analysts warn, Boeing must signal direction by 2027 at the latest. Miss that window? Game over. Airlines losing patience. Every month, Boeing waits, another carrier locks in with Airbus for decades. But there's another problem. Airports physically can't expand anymore. Heathrow's been frozen at two runways for decades. JFK is pure chaos. LAX turns away growth. The only way to grow, use larger, more efficient aircraft in the same slots. Think about it. Every major hub faces the same problem. More passengers, same infrastructure, tighter regulations. The revolutionary design isn't just about beating Airbus. It's about solving a crisis the entire industry faces. Here's Boeing's only hope. Build the plane airports actually need, and airlines have no choice but to buy it. Yet, technology development continues in shadows. Suppliers advancing materials, universities refining aerodynamics, NASA pushing boundaries with demonstrators. When Boeing finally moves, they'll inherit mature concepts ready for commercial application. Question is, will they move fast enough to matter? Want to know the most ironic part of this whole story? Remember when Airbus launched the A320neo, they didn't revolutionize anything, took an existing plane, slapped on new engines, added winglets, cost them $1 billion. Boeing laughed, called it a re-engine job. Who's laughing now? Airbus sold over 8,000 of them. The engineers saw the A320neo as proof Airbus lacked vision. No revolutionary technology, no moonshots, just practical improvements customers actually wanted. Meanwhile, Boeing bet everything on the max, stretched a 1960s design to its absolute limit, added bigger engines that didn't fit, created software to hide the handling problems. With 346 people paying with their lives for Boeing's innovation, and now, a choice enters the equation, one that could destroy Boeing if it goes wrong, play it safe like Airbus or swing for the fences and risk another catastrophe. The company's studying every option, a max stretch that pushes the design to its absolute limit, a clean sheet narrow body with conventional tube and wing but modern systems, or the moonshot, truss braced wings that change everything but risk everything. The clock's ticking, every month of delay costs market share, every Airbus delivery is another nail in the 730 Seven's coffin, but here's the twist nobody sees coming. What if Boeing's delay is actually their secret weapon? While Airbus commits to incremental improvements, Boeing leapfrogs with mature technology, next generation engines ready, composites achieving new economics, AI optimizing impossible designs. Sometimes second place shows you exactly where the leader stumbles, but let's be honest, failure scenarios loom massive. The successor arrives broken. Airbus dominates through 2050. Boeing Boeing becomes a defense contractor. American aerospace leadership shifts overseas forever. Industry insiders paint a different picture. Incremental improvements to the max. Maybe folding wingtips like the 777X. Enhanced engines when they're ready. Nothing revolutionary. Nothing that saves them. Think about this. Would you bet $20 billion on Boeing pulling off the impossible? Would you trust them after the max disaster? These aren't hypothetical questions. Airlines are asking them right now. Ortberg's asking himself every Every morning, every Boeing engineer working late in Seattle tonight knows what's at stake. This isn't just another aircraft program, it's the battle for American aerospace dominance. Boeing stands at aviation's crossroads, launch a revolutionary successor, potentially reclaim everything, wait too long, watch it all evaporate. Here's the countdown, Ortberg has maybe 18 months to decide, signal commitment by late 2026, launch direction by 2027, or lose the narrow-body market forever. Wynn and Boeing reclaims the throne. The 737 replacement becomes the defining aircraft of the 2030s. American engineering prowess validated for another generation. Lose and the 737 becomes the last great American narrowbody ever built. Airbus and Comac divide the spoils. And Seattle becomes a ghost town of abandoned dreams. Hit subscribe and click here to check out another video.